Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about a product that I am actually excited about and this is a good direction. It's called the Signature Spellbook. Uh, we get Jace first and I think this product will be very expensive a few years from now. I'm assuming we are going to get each of the Planeswalkers eventually or at least Jace, Lily, Chandra, possibly Garuk, Nissa. Gideon, there's a bunch, maybe even Nicol Bolas would be kind of nice because he's multi-colored. So it is $19.99, which is reasonably priced. I like the price point. It makes a lot of sense to me. It, this should not be a San Diego Comic-Con type of $200 set. It should be a set with new artwork, which it has, and focused on one Planeswalker, and it's the perfect set for EDH. You don't need to buy four copies of it. Uh, a lot of these cards are not played in Modern or Legacy. But for EDH, it's kind of like an EDH boost. Hey, pay $20. Now you can upgrade your EDH deck if you play blue at all. I think this product is going to sell extremely well. And I feel like they're going to produce a lot of it. Now, this is supposed to replace from the vault. And From the Vault was an exclusive product. It was something that was almost never at MSRP, which I think was $34.99, or I think it was $34.99, but you almost never saw it sold at that price. And more or less, it was given to local game stores as a reward. As a reward for, you know, here, here's, make some money, guys, so you can stay in business to offer your place for our card game now the first one of anything is always going to be the most valuable uh, this is true for almost any collect collectible item comic books whatever it is the first one is always going to be the most iconic and hardest to find if you have any interest in any of these cards i would get my hands on a copy as soon as you can and maybe even paying over retail I'm not sure how these are distributed I assume it is the same as from the vault uh, that counter spell the artwork in that counter spell is originally from Jace first Chandra it was about 15 or 20 dollars at one point in time given just the artwork so that red part is Chandra which makes me believe that Chandra is getting, she will be the next one in line. Uh, Gifts on Given is a pretty interesting card. Mystic Tutor, there's definitely, artwork aside, there's very close to about $20 of value in just the cards themselves. But when you put Jace on the artwork, as a counterspell can tell, a counterspell is a dollar normally. You put Jace on it and you make it kind of a limited release, like Jace for Jace first Chandra, which wasn't even that limited. There's a dual deck. You're looking at a $15 card now. Now, Mystic Tutor is a good one. I hope they kind of symmetrically do it. And Red's Tutor is Gamble. Like that would be the Red's version of a Tutor, and which I actually need for ed 8 believe it was reprinted maybe all right anyway back to the artwork this is the way to do it right you don't need to print super valuable cards no one's gonna be like oh negate hmm negate that 50 cent card needs to be reprinted but you put new artwork on it you give it kind of a new design a card theme and it's gonna sell i don't see why they don't do that haven't done that before this seems like such a logical none of these cards by themselves are worth more than twenty dollars with their their old artwork you don't need valuable cards to produce a good product and you don't need to hype up the value of a product you can just make something like this and people will buy it they'll enjoy it and this is a home run of a it's, it will be a home run i knew masters 25 would fail as soon as i saw imperial recruiter i was like oh and then i saw rasan port i was like oh geez 
these are things that will plummet in price. And because historically they plummet in price, it's not like we had Caracas, right? Oh, I wonder what Caracas would did. Hmm, Rishon Port, kind of similar. Although, if anything, Caracas was is older than Rishon Port, but played is in the same format. I just feel like they need a home run, and this is the product to do it. I also know that since we're going to get more of these. You want the first one. You want the first one. It's the same with the dual decks. What was the first dual deck? I know Divi Divine versus Demonic was very pricey. Uh, that was a good one because you had the artwork of Lily and the Demonic Tutor. That that card's still way over MSRP of the entire product. You want the first one of a new product because. Uh, that typically has more collector value. I think that this is a clear buy in my opinion and it will hold value for a long time. It's storytelling. They have not done this well for some time. I don't really care about this story, but I know who Jace is. I like, you know, being a blue maid, maybe cosplaying a blue maid. Brain, like this is the way to do it. You don't need expensive cards to make a product good. And if your product makes absolutely no sense, like Iconic Masters and Masters 25, there's no like, why are these cards in the same product together? You will fail. It will fail. This is a themed product. Like, Masters 25 is not. This makes sense. It's the same dude on all the artwork. It's super obvious this is going to be successful. Uh, anyway, uh, that's my suggestion is if you have any interest in Jace or any of these promos, you got to buy them. You just got to buy them. Um, I think they will be... What was the first dual deck? Does anyone know? Oh, it's probably something really bad. It was like Finkel versus like... Garfield, first magic dual deck, dual deck. Okay, what do you guys think it was? Oh, dual deck anthologies. Oh, it was elves versus goblins. Ah, interesting. We just had Murfolk versus goblins as the last dual deck until they remake it again. With elves versus goblins, then Jace versus Chandra, Divine versus Demonic, Garuk versus Liliana. Phyrexian versus the Collation. I thought that was the first dual deck. No. Uh, Phyrexian versus Collation was 2010 after Garuk versus Lely. That one did very poorly. Elspeth versus Tezzeret. Knights versus Dragons. Ajani versus Nico Bolez. Venture versus Kof. Is it versus Golgari? That's a good one with all the dredge cards. Well, I guess it used to be good. It still has Life from the Loam. But the Gogari Trail got banned. Uh, Soren ver versus Tibble, probably one of the worst ones. Heroes versus Monsters, a really bad one. Jace versus Vraska. Speed versus Cunning, I don't even remember that one to be honest. Elspeth versus Kiora. Zendikar versus Adrazi, also a good one. And that's something to keep your eyes on because it's got one of the Adrazi lands. What's it, a temple or something? That's a good card and it's over $10. Bless versus Cursed. Probably not a good one. Nissa versus Obnixilis. Wow, Obnixilis got like slaughtered. Might versus Mind versus Might and Murfolk versus Goblins, which is an interesting one. But L versus Goblins. Oh, so Jace versus Chandra was the second one. That one was very good. Uh, I remembered. And then Divine versus Demonic makes sense. That's the the next one, the third one. So in Dual Deck Anthology, they reprinted 2014, they reprinted Elves vs. Goblins, Jace vs. Chandra, Divine vs. Demonic, Garug vs. Liliana. So the next four to be reprinted in the same anthology set, assuming they follow the same pattern. Phyrexia vs. Decolition, not great. Elspeth vs. Tezzeret, that's a good one. Knights vs. Dragons, I don't remember... Knight of the Reliquary is in that deck, but I don't remember what's on the dragon side. Punishing Fire of New Art Orc is on the, our 
different artwork is on that side. And then Johnny versus Nico Boles. So that actually would be a lose. Um, I would not buy that product. Um, but if they change some of it around, like, I don't know. Wow, yeah, those four. <laughs> Divine versus Demonic is basically one card. It's basically the Demonic Tutor for Lily. All right, anyway, I am very excited about this product. Uh, let me guys know in the comment section below if you guys are going to buy it or you're not going to buy it. Anyway, bye guys.